So, last class uh, we have covered this uh, shrinkage limit, shrinkage limit is the water content beyond which there is no more change in uh, volume of soil. So, basically if this is my shrinkage limit beyond which there is no more change in volume, volume remains constant. So, this shrinkage limit will give this uh, state that means a solid state of soil and uh, we have discussed about this shrinkage limit how to find it out, we can find it out by taking the volume of soil and water and making it dry and find it out mass and volume of soil and uh, dry soil from there you can find it out uh, shrinkage limit. Then we will start this uh, with this liquid limit, plastic limit uh, and shrinkage limit what are the with this limit what are the parameters we are supposed to get or indices. First one is your plasticity index that is called P i, if it is named P i then it means plasticity index. It is describing the range of water content over which the soil is plastic. Once it is said plastic limit that means the water content the range of water content at which over which the soil is a plastic. So, plasticity index is a liquid limit minus plastic limit. So, plasticity index basically it shows the plastic state of the soil. If this is the liquid limit it lies between liquid state and plastic state and plastic limit lies between, between plastic state and semi solid state. Shrinkage limit lies between semi solid state and solid state. PI is your plasticity index basically it terms your plasticity plastic state complete plastic state. Similarly, liquidity index or it is called LI. Liquidity index is the natural water content of soil sample to this limit. If uh, I say liquidity index it can be calculated as I say it W minus P L by liquid limit minus plastic limit or plastic index. W is your natural moisture content or the water content of the soil it has, then plastic limit P L is your plastic limit. So, if liquidity index is less than 1, less than 0, then it is it, it terms as a brittle or fracture. If a soil having liquidity index less than 0, if you shear it, then a brittle fracture failure you will get it. If liquidity index between 0 to 1, then if, if we shear it, then we will get a plastic solid state you find it out. If liquidity index is greater than 1, then it is viscous liquid, we termed it as a viscous liquid. Then next index indices is your sensitivity ST. This sensitivity is specially used for clays. So, sensitivity ST is strength on disturb that means strength in on disturb divided by strength in disturb conditions. So, if you look at here on disturb A is your on disturb this is my A on disturb and B is your thoroughly remolded sample of clay from Ottawa, Ontario. This is thoroughly remolded clay and it has been put by this uh, compression and unconfined shear strength typical value of sensitivity based on the unconfined shear strength. You can say that sensitivity based on this uh, report as given by Hall and Kavok 1981, low sensitivity is called as for the US, it is 2 to 4 as for US code. As for Sweden, if it is less than 10, it is low sensitivity medium sensitivity between 4 to 8, high sensitivity 8 to 16, then quick is your 16. That means, how far it is sensitive as compared to your disturbed sample and strength of disturbed sample if I take the ratio, the strength of undisturbed sample how, how far it is sensitive as compared to your strength of disturbed sample. Now, next indices is your activity is uh, like uh, A, it, it has been given by Skempton 1953, it is called A, activity means A, it is your plastic, plasticity index P i divided by percentage of clay fraction by weight. So, clay fraction has been taken as per the Skempton, generally if it is soil particles passing through the sieve 0.022 mm 
that means 2 microns see below this if soil fraction soil particles passing this is called clay fraction. Purpose is both the type and amount of clay in soil will affect the Atterberg limit. That means, why you are doing this activity? Activity is a kind of plasticity index in terms of percentage clay fraction. Activity is the representation of plasticity index in terms of percentage clay fraction. That means, it will, it will give both type and amount of clay. What type and what is the amount of clay in soil that affects your, your Atterberg's limit. This index is aimed to separate them. That means, what type and what amount of the clay in the soil. That means, it will separate the clay fraction completely from the soil. If I say it is a normal clay, the activity is varying from 1.25 to 0.75. Inactive clay, it is A is less than 0.75. Active clays, A is greater than 1.25. If I say it is inactive clay, what does it mean? That means, percentage of clay fraction is very less. That means, percentage of clay fraction in the soil sample is very less. That is why it is called inactive. Highly active or high active that means, large volume change high active means percentage of clay fraction it shows the moment you say that the soil sample has high activity. That means, it shows percentage of clay fraction is much more that means, there might be a chance that large volume of change will occur. Then once it is dried then large shrinkage may be occurred or very reactive to chemical this is the indication that means, it gives indirectly or directly you can say how much percentage of clay fraction in a soil sample. Suppose, you take a soil sample of 200 to 300 gram, once you do this classification and other things, then you will have to find it out what is its activity. After doing liquidity index, plastic index and shrinkage limit, all this uh, liquid, liquid limit, plastic limit and shrinkage limit from there you find it out PI, plasticity index from there you get your activity. Once you find it out activity, then you classify. If activity is greater than 1.25, that means percentage of clay fractions are much more in the soil sample as compared to other soil grains. Clay, silt, sand, gravel, these are the fractions. As compared to silt, sand and gravel, the clay fractions are more. This activity it shows. It means there will be a large change in volume when it when it is wetted that means, when there is a rainy season large change in volume and large shrinkage will occur when it is dried that means, in summer season. And it may possible that it is very reactive when the chemicals added any chemicals. So, activity of various clay minerals also it has been given by Mitchell 1993. If you see light is 0 0.5 to 1, kaolinite is 0 0.5, then Alphen is 0 0.5 to 1.2. What are its engineering application? What we have done this uh, Atterberg's limits or grain size distribution right now means we have finished this grain size distribution for coarse grain for fine grain soil we have finished this Atterberg's limit that means liquid uh, limit, plastic limit, shrinkage limit and indices, liquidity index, uh, plasticity index and uh, your activity. What does it mean? How far it is? Uh, it applied in engineering application. It is basically applied for soil classification. Soil classification. The Atterberg limit enable clay soils to be classified. That means, it allows the clay soil to be classified. If I will take the Casa Grande's plastic chart 1977, if you look at here, plasticity index P i plasticity index that means, P i versus your liquid limit if I plot it look at here 10 to 20 percent two lines I plot it this is your plasticity index of this is a line and u line called a line is your 0 0.73 liquid limit minus 20 and u line is your plasticity index P i is equal to 0 0.9 liquid limit minus 8. In the in between this range if you look at this two range medium plastic inorganic clay, it lies of liquid limit between 40 to 50, 
with this plasticity index of U line and A line and between 50 to liquid uh, limit of 50 to 70, if you look at your liquid limit of 50 to 70, if you draw it between 50 to 70, this is my range. In this range, inner garing clay of high plasticity, it term as C H, C for clay, H for high plasticity and medium plastic inorganic clays, it is between from here to here, here to here that is called C L. L is your low plasticity, H, H is your high plasticity. That means, this says that inorganic clay of high plasticity termed as C H, inorganic clay of medium plasticity is called C L, then M L is your low plasticity. You see, this is the classification. Now, if you go, if you look at here, it, it, it is clearly are marked low plasticity inorganic clays, sandy or silty clays. Then here, this range particularly, if I take this range of plasticity index between 4 to 6, a line has been drawn 4 to 6, where it intercept with your U line as well as A line. And this has been marked with shaded, this has been shaded. If you look at it, how does it mean the soil belongs to this range? It is silty clay or clay silt and sands. Look at the classification. Then, what is the meaning of OL or OH? O means organic, inorganic or organic silt, inorganic or organic silt clay of low plasticity, L means plasticity in terms of low plasticity, M is your silt, here M is silt, M is equal to terms to silt, C is your clay, O is your organic soil. Then your H is your high plasticity, then L is your low or sometimes called medium plasticity, now in this term if this is this is lying below whatever the soil, it is lying below a line. If you look at here, it is lying below a line. This is called from here to here 50 percent, this is called O L. That means, inorganic and organic silt and silty clays of low plasticity, rock, silty or clay, clay fine sands. Now, if I come to here, if I come to between this 50 to 80 percent below a line, either this is OH or MH. H means is your highly plasticity, O means organic or M is your silt. That means, if you look at here the classification has been made, micaceous or diatomaceous fine sandy and silty soils, elastic silts organic silts, O for organic you see, organic silts, clays and silty clays. That means, if I look at this uh, particularly look at this region for doing this Atterberg limit for fine grained soils, liquid limit, plastic limit, shrinkage limit, liquidity index, plasticity index, activity. If I do it, it means I want to classify where it exactly lies the clay sample or the clay soil or maybe the fine grained soils, what is its classification? This classification has been given by Casa Grande plasticity chart in 1977. 
these the Atterberg limits are usually correlated with some engineering properties. Why we are doing this? One is your soil classification. First one is your soil classification. This Atterberg's limits. That means whether it's a highly inorganic or organic, whether it is a plastic or low plastic or high plastic. This classification point of view we do this Atterberg's limit. What is the next step? The Atterberg limits are usually correlated with some engineering properties. Look at here, some engineering properties such as permeability. Permeability is termed as small k. Compressibility. Compressibility is nothing but your consolidation. That means CC. Then shear strength. Shear strength parameter is your C and phi and others. That means directly or indirectly, this Atterberg's limits is an indicative, this Atterberg limit is an indicative of engineering property. Indicative that means it gives an indication of engineering properties like what is its permeability, if this kind of soil is there, suppose clay, 20 percent of clay is there, what is its permeability it is giving and what is, what is its permeability means, what is its coefficient of consolidation or compressibility, how much time it take to uh, consolidate and how long you can get it indirectly all or, or also you can get it what is the shear strength, what is the strength for design of foundations. Then in general if I make it clay with high plasticity just a classification how it is useful for our uh, uh, engineering property finding out the engineering properties clays with high plasticity have low permeability. Low permeability means water passing through the soil will be very less. It takes long time for permeable and they are difficult to be compacted. It is not very easy to be compacted. That means once it is low permeability, that means the compressibility capacity number of days to require the water to come out, how long it will take to consolidate that means it will be very high. The value of SL shrinkage limit can be used as a criterion to assess and prevent the excessive cracking of clay liner in the reservoir embankment or canal. Look at here, the moment you find it out the shrinkage limit, if you know the shrinkage limit is very high, then if you know the shrinkage limit the value, then you can say that if there is a chance of any cracking of clay liner, generally clay liner provided in reservoir, embankment and canals, then you can design also, then you can prevent also. So, in a way these Atterberg's limits indirectly or indicative of your engineering properties of soil and as well as also it has been used for soil classification. The representative particle size of residual soil, the particles of residual soil are susceptible to severe breakdown during sieve analysis. So, the measured grain size distribution is sensitive to test procedures. Okay. That means, the particles of residual soils, these are it may chance once you take the residual soil it may chance that there is a it may possible that there is a severe breakdown during this sieve analysis that means, the particle will break down. So, Measured grain size distribution is sensitive, particularly this grain size distribution if you conduct for residual soil it will be very sensitive. Then this is your grain size, some thought about this sieve analysis, I means while doing this residual soils, you should be carefully do this residual soil. What will happen while doing uh, this uh, grain size distribution, particularly residual soil, over the once you put the soil in the sieve then go for shaking in a sieve shaker, what will happen this particle will break down, further break down. It may not give the accurate result of your particularly grain size distribution curve. In weight analysis also some thought for clean sand and gravel, for clean sand and gravels dry sieve analysis can be used. It is not possible to go for a weight analysis or hydrometer, hydrometer analysis for particularly clean sand and gravel, you go for weight analysis. If soils contain silt and clay, 
uh, weight analysis or hydrometer analysis weight analysis means I mean say that it means hydrometer analysis. Weight analysis or hydrometer analysis is usually used to preserve the fine content is usually used to preserve the fine content. What will happen? If I put this fine content fine particles in sieve, it may chance that it will break down. To preserve it particularly fine grain soils weight analysis is required. These are all some thoughts about this sieve analysis. Now, what mechanics has been used in this sieve analysis or hydrometer and eh, sorry in weight analysis or hydrometer analysis. If you look at this, this mechanics behind is your Stokes law. That means, assumption is that in this Stokes law how much time it takes to settle in a in a like a particularly uh, in a jar full of soil and water. That means, particles how much time it will take particle to settle based on that this uh, you can it has been classified accordingly whether it is more fine or less fine. Assumption the basic assumption of the Stokes law is that all particles should be spherical particles which is not true this is also a drawback, but despite this drawback it has been used. So, particle uh, platy particle real it is as d is less than 0.005 mm single particle another assumption is your it says that single particle that means no interference between particles that means each particle once I put it in a beaker what will happen in hydrometer analysis you take a jar you take a measuring jar in this measuring jar mixing with water with this uh, deflocculated agents then put these particles soil particle inside this water. So, the assumption is that each particle inside this soil it should be a single particle it should not be like a two three particles will mix and it will make a bond and it will settle. So, many particles in the suspension this assumption in actually reality this assumption is not true that it is as behave like a each of the particle will settle no it may possible that two three particle it makes many particle uh, will be in suspension. Known specific gravity of particles that means, you know that specific gravity known specific gravity of this particle based on that you are finding this hydrometer analysis average actually reality is average results of all the minerals in the particles including this adsorbed water film that means, the adsorbed water films also can increase the resistance during particle settling. Then assumption is your terminal velocity. So, it is not true in reality it is Brownian motion as d is less than 0.0002 mm. These are all these, these, these are this has been taken some thoughts has been taken from Lambe 1991 means basically it says that what is the assumption actually what is the reality. If you look at the assumptions assumption 1 is your sphere particle and it should behave like a single particle and E specific gravity of the particle is known then it is a terminal velocity actual reality it is not a spherical particle it is not a single particle inside the soil many particles may be as a behave like a as one particle like many particles means one particle other particle like this 3 4 soil particle it will mix it will behave like one particle. Then terminal velocity is not possible in case of d is less than equal to 0.0001 or you can say that this is the assumption and this is the drawback reality or this is the drawback particularly in case of hydrometer analysis despite this drawback and assumptions this has been used popularly everywhere else to find it out this fine grain soil classification based on your hydrometer analysis. Now, these are your for your homework please derive the equation for calculating the percentage finer than d that means, percentage finer than d is 1000 g s d square by g s minus 1 r d by m percentage you derive it 
please understand the calibration of hydrometer that means hr 200.4 minus 3.90 rh why what is this calibration this is for your homework you can try and you can uh, just uh, explain yourself what is this hr is equal to 200.4 minus 3.90 rh then these notes because i have to solve it again this please remove this example i'll solve it uh, maybe later on these are the reference basically these are the reference has been taken from das bm head lambe whitman lambe then mitchell next part of your geotechnical measurements and exploration in laboratory particularly this uh, use of bender element in laboratory also by using bender element you can measure dynamic property of soil by means of so means you can measure the shear wave velocity in a triaxial cell you can place your bender element and go for test you can find it out what is the shear wave velocity of the soil now make the most of each sample measurement external to the sample these are all your traditional measurements length and pressure static and in stages it is refinement monitoring internal to the sample you have to monitor new measurements velocity and conductivity these are earlier measurements now in this monitoring velocity and conductivity and dynamic it has been used in design and explorations now if you look at here this is basically i am showing a bender element how it has been placed inside this uh, triaxial equipment so there are two methods one is your in situ method by seismic downhole or by means of seismic cross hole you can find it out zero velocity if you don't have any zero velocity data in field you can conduct also in the laboratory either in undisturbed sample or in remolded sample if you look at here these are all piezo electric transducers these are beam shaped benders these called beam shaped benders these are the two benders beam shaped bender if i look at here these are all your sensors this bender element has been used one has been used as a receiver other is your as a like source one part is a source that means from where the wave will be propagated other part of your bender element has been used as a receiver that means the wave transmitted from here to from the inside the soil mass one has been put at the bottom one has been put at the top particularly these are all beam shaped beam shaped benders it is called beam shaped bender as it looks like beam so there are two benders element one as a source another as a receiver one put at the bottom one put at the top these are all sensors beam shaped with this bender these are all sensors it has been pushed inside the soil at the top and bottom shear motion and superposition hold if you look at the bender pulse test from transmission direction from source to receiver normalize amplitude in the receiver if i plot it it travel 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 it receive and it go so this is a bender pulse test means how this pulse moves inside this soil sample now there are many advantages before i go for the test uh, details there are many advantages first one is your it is economical it is very cheaper as compared to field test lot of money you want to you have to spend but this is very economical a personal computer from there two ports are required two port this is your port surrounded and this is your soil element this is your soil element with this soil element one part of your receiving element one is your source this is my source uh, means the wave has been propagated or generated in this source in the bender element and this is the receiver then with this you can record how this bender pulse 
travel inside the soil and it it doesn't require much time much much money it's step one is it is very economical as compared to field test advantage two is your it's operative it means it's very versatile and robust and it analogous to your field condition and simple interpretation you can simply interpret if you look at here my this is my soil that means zero wave has been means if wave has been generated at the bottom by source you receive at the top that means you can find it out simple interpretation g or c or modulus you can find it out by means of rho into bs bs is your shear wave velocity and that is your distance from tip to top tip to tip from here to here distance travel from here to here by how much time it takes it very simple to interpret so this is your advantage too and it is quite operative means versatile robust and it simulate is your field condition or field analogous and it's automated you can make it automatic uh, this uh, pulse or data you can generate or record inside your computer a promise third advantage your promise means stiffness is anisotropic you can measure the stiffness anisotropic anisotropy reveals micro structural symmetry anisotropy isotropy means x y z direction it will be same anisotropy means x y z it is different so continuous stiffness measurement you can measure your continuous stiffness gives access to structure evolution that means what is microstructure inside that you can assess it but shear anisotropy is generally small less than 30% deviation accuracy is an issue this is this is really accuracy it is an issue then what are the outlines we are going to discuss that means current bender practice motivation why bender testing what for this bender testing is required as i said the bender testing is required it is more robust more easily you can find it out in the laboratory particular soil you can find it out particularly soil what kind of shear wave velocity inside for that soil you can find it out what is your shear modulus g once you find it out g g is nothing but your dynamic property of soil this can be used for design purpose of of the or ground response analysis of soil then current practice means there are definitely in laboratory test there are sort some limitations we'll discuss and modeling issue as i said while doing analysis how the bender element results are using in the modeling issue then what kind of sample in soil sample in the lab you are doing going to do that means effect of sample size also on bender element we'll discuss effect of sample size means if i take a sample size of 38 by 72 or maybe 50 by 100 50, sorry 38 by 76 of 50 by 100 or 100 by 200 its meaning is this is your diameter this is your length this is your diameter this is your length this is your diameter this is your length that means what kind of sample size i should take in the lab i have the variety of sample size i can take also i can take is 38 by 76 or 50 by 100 or 100 by 200 or also 150 by 150 by 300 or also 200 by 400 this i can take it that means reliability of the test it depends upon your sample size what minimum sample size is required for this test then modeling modeling improvements particularly how the modeling has to be improved that means in near field one is your far from the field one is your near field how it will accuracy data you are going to use so that modeling has to be improved then 
sample size how it has effect particularly experimental and numerical point of view how it has effect then also sample size modeling hints also it has to be discussed then last one is your conclusion in this particularly this bender element use i am going to we are going to discuss one by one all these things maybe i will discuss in the next class